Welcome to ATP Report. Our special guest back today is Phil Haney, a founding member of the Department of Homeland Security, a longtime officer protecting the borders of America from foreign invaders, and a very well-known scholar in the field of the Islamification of America and around the world. Phil, welcome back. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Of course, it's such an honor to have you again. Today, we're going to talk about something that every concerned American should know about. And what's shocking to me, especially when I talk to an expert like you, is how big this news is. And pathetically, and I mean that word literally, pathetically, how little the average American knows about the infiltration of America by a specific group bent philosophically and pragmatically on the replacement of our democratic republic with Sharia law. And I'm speaking specifically about the Holy Land Foundation and your knowledge about it. So let's start with, give us a little background, Phil, on the Holy Land Foundation, their tie to radical Islam and what we should know about that organization. The, whole, the Holy Land Foundation trial began in 2007 in Dallas, Texas. It was the Department of Justice and they discovered a network operating in the United States of individuals and organizations and they all had one thing in common. They were connected to the Muslim Brotherhood. Now this network was structured in order to raise money to collect it and then send it over to Hamas. It was all about supporting of Hamas. Well, why was this illegal? It's because Hamas had been designated as a glo global terrorist organization. And so mosques and other Muslim organizations were raising money and sending it to a globally designated terrorist organization known as Hamas. And that's what set off the Holy Land Foundation trial. It was concluded successfully in November, actually Thanksgiving Day, November of 2008, with 102 convictions of five individuals for somewhere, and it varies, the numbers vary between 12 and $60 million of support for Hamas. They are all still in jail to this day. And that was not supposed to be the end of the story. There was going to be another phase of the trial, phase two. All right, before we go to phase two, let me stop you so everybody understands. The United States government finds a charity, and I'm putting that in quote marks, within the United States called the Holy Land Foundation that has a network of supporters and members throughout the United States whose mission it is to raise money as much as possible, collect it within the United States, and then send it overseas to a terror organization whose mission is murder and mayhem. Do I have that correctly? Yes, you have that correctly. Uh and let me add one more fine point to it to bring it into sharper focus. And that is that according to Sharia law, which we hear about so much lately, it is obligatory that one eighth of all revenue generated within the Muslim community is required to go to support of the Jihad. So in this case, that money is being legally, according to Sharia, collected and funneled to support the Jihad, in this case, for Hamas, who is fighting against the existence of Israel, and is the actual son of, a child of this global organization called the Muslim Brotherhood. So let's stop here, Phil. And I don't want to jump over without an explanation from you, tell us what is the Muslim Brotherhood? What are their missions around the world 
and specifically for us in America that we should be scared to death of. They're very plain about it. They're not shy about stating it and it's not subtle. They say that their goal as an Islamic revival organization that started in 1928 because of the presence of European nations in the Middle East, which they found offensive, to bring back the caliphate, the one that existed during the Ottoman Empire and for hundreds of years in various forms throughout the Middle East, to bring back the caliphate in modern times and establish Sharia law in Egypt only or Jordan maybe or just Turkey no the whole world and that is their driving ideology it's like a force of gravity that drives them forward just like the solar system all the planets circle around the Sun so all these Muslim Brotherhood organizations circle around the Sun that is the force that holds them all together and that is what we could call Sharia. Now, so is let's, bring, let's bring that back to America. So we have this conviction of this group of conspirators. They all get sent away on over 100 convictions. They're still in jail. Why should we be concerned about the Holy Land Foundation and the Muslim Brotherhood today? I mean, aren't they gone? No, because they were only five of many hundreds and thousands of similar individuals that are still operating in the country today and much higher level than they were even back then 10 plus years ago now they've saturated into the halls of congress into the u.s state department in the law enforcement into interfaith dialogue there's really no place that you can turn these days where you won't see the face of the Muslim Brotherhood. So it's gone up, it's increased, not diminished. So is, is Holy Land Foundation now non-existent, that specific organization? It doesn't exist, but there were many other organizations that were part of that same solar system network that are still operating today exactly the way they were more than 10 years ago. So a minute ago, you were hinting there was supposed to be a phase two, Phil. In other words, the trial concludes, these guys get sent away. There's hundreds of other similar supporters of organizations as bad or worse than Holy Land Foundation. What was supposed to be phase two, Phil, that you suggested didn't take place? I'm glad you asked because the State Department, I mean, the Department of Justice was very specific about it. They were the phase two was going to include a similar kind of procedure legal trial against three major organizations that are part of that network and many of us have heard of them. The first one is the Council on American Islamic Relations known as CARE. The second one is the Islamic Society of North America also known as ISNA or ISNA and the third one was the North American Islamic Trust the banking holding company of the properties of the nearly 3,000 mosques that are now in the United States. Those three organizations, all proven to be part of the Muslim Brotherhood Network, were meant to be t the focus of the f second phase of the trial, and it never happened. Phil, that is scaring me to death, and we're gonna bring you back for a part two to find out what those organizations are all about. For now, thanks for coming on. And thank you for joining us on ATP Report. Please text the word TRUTH to 88202. You will get this show and all of our shows and all of our articles directly on your cell phone. And we never charge for anything. Or you can go to our website simply by typing in findberry.com you'll go to American Truth Project where you can sign up on the mailing list. And again, it's always free. Thanks for joining us. I'm Barry Newsbaum.